Let's take a look in the strawberry patch and see how this variety is doing. Uh, I'm not sure how you pronounce this. Uh, Albion, maybe? I don't know. This is a new uh, day neutral ever bearing type that I tried this year for the first time. And we're going to pop in. <clears throat> Here it is, the end of uh, July. Yeah. I want to see how these are doing. I haven't really uh, pulled too many off of here yet. So let's walk down the row. I do all my row, all my strawberries are irrigated. <clears throat> I never grew ever bearing varieties before, so I really didn't know what I was doing. But uh, I grew them just like I grow my June bearings on raised beds, black plastic with drip line. Uh, some of the rows I have double drip. This one is a single, uh, but I do have some other rows that I doubled it up in. Just wanted to see how the difference it makes, trying a little something new. So uh, yes, so each one of these rows has a valve. I can turn it on and off, and I have every <clears throat> every other row is something else. Like there's a raspberry over here. This is a. It was supposed to be black raspberries, but you know what? It's just not. <laughs> it looks like some type of red raspberry, yellow raspberry. This is the first year, so it's a, it's a, it's a primacaning, primacane fruiting raspberry. So I don't know what it is. I ordered uh, jewel black raspberry, and this is clearly not a black raspberry. So uh, we'll just have to see what it is when it uh, ripens up, and maybe I'll make another video. But uh, I, I'm I'm kind of glad that it turned out to be what it is because uh, I didn't want to put black raspberries here, but this was the only spot I had open at the time, and uh, it's going to work out because when these strawberries are done, <clears throat> the raspberries on this side will be too full for a row of strawberries in between these blackberries over here over here this is a variety it's called a Washita uh, I actually picked one now this is a this is a uh, a, a floricaning variety which means it gets the fruit on the second year wood and uh, the first year you're just getting vegetative growth and then the second year you'll get your uh, your laterals off the sides of the cane and then you'll get your fruit on there but there was a, a considerable amount of stem when I planted these so that sent a few canes off short canes and it has fruit on it and I picked one today and it was it was quite good and it had a really nice flavor uh, <clears throat> and that's a washita all right, so let's walk down this row here. I got some thistle I, I didn't deal with, but <clears throat> these here strawberries, I go through and I cut all these runners off and any leaves that have senesced, uh, you know, when they start to turn yellow and they've done their, they've done their thing and it's time for them to move on to the leaf pile in the sky. All right, so... I need to come through here and uh, cut all the runners off of these. They're starting to get a bunch of runners, but oh, what? oh boy, <clears throat> look here, look here. Wow, look at the size of that berry. Now that's what you want. Wow, I'll tell you, for my first year ever growing these, I'm pretty happy. These are beautiful these berries now that one's a little goofy I'll get rid of that I'll trim that out but look over here right oh there's another batch on here look at the size of these are beautiful and this is <clears throat> this is uh, I'm almost in the first next week is August you know look at this they're beautiful and I haven't sprayed anything on these I fertilize them every time I water them but I don't spray anything. Now, here, I was out here earlier and I had to stop and go and get my camera because I came into some beautiful berries. Now, this one looks like a slug was on it. Yep, look at that. 
see that little hole there? When I talk about leaves senescing, this is what I'm talking about right here. See how that, that was one of the first leaves that was probably on there uh, from the very early days. And it's, 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 it's done its job and it's, it's done now. So you just remove them. You keep your plastic clean. Keep the underside of your berries clean and you get rid of all these leaves. And like I said, you cut all the runners off too. Look at these berries. These are gorgeous. This is my first time growing these. And it's, a, it's, I would say I have success. There's tons of green ones on there. Now some of these plants have some issues. I probably should have sprayed a fungicide on here. But for the most part, they're pretty nice. And then uh, I'll keep these this winter. I'll keep these this winter and uh, <clears throat> get another crop off them in the spring and then I'll rip them out. And then uh, I'll take this plastic off and these these hoops and the netting and pack that all away. I'll take the plastic and put that in. There's the guy that recycles all this black plastic and the drip tape. And then I'll take half of this row and I'll throw it to the left and half to the right. And uh, build up my berms for my blackberries and my raspberries. Oh, look at these. These are gorgeous. Look at them berries. Beautiful. All the way up through here. So, I was at auction today. I took in a flat of uh, seascapes, which is the next variety over here in this row. I took a flat of seascapes in. These berries have a different shape to them. Uh, and I've been picking quite a few off of here. I picked I just picked these this morning, but you can see there's some there's some nice big berries in there. They're beauties. Yeah, I'll get it down here. Some more. These seascapes. So I took some of these to auction today and I got I put them in half pint tills. And I got uh, three 325 I think a p half pint no I mean a pint yeah I put them in pint tills I'm sorry so I got 325 a pint that would be six dollars and fifty cents a quart so that was worth my time and somebody else had brought in some of these these Albions and they had brought in a couple flats and uh, there was uh, there's 12 there's 12 pints in a flat, and they were getting anywhere from 50, 50 to 50 to 60 dollars a flat. So that's for 12 pints, 60 bucks. You figure it out. Pretty good money. All right. Well, this is my my blackberry and raspberry patch, and I'm. Um, Growing some strawberries for the first year, or the first year and a half till they get established, and then I'll need the room for the the blackberries. This variety here is Natchez. See, it's very compact. Look how dense the leaves are on the stalks. Very full and a stocky plant. That's Natchez. That's that's a a floricaning blackberry also. But you see, I got a couple. A couple small flora canes here, and these are the prima canes, the new growth. And uh, I'll get a couple of pieces of fruit, but next year will be the year to harvest, to look forward to it. This variety here is Primark Freedom. Now this is a, a prima caning variety of blackberry, which means you will get fruit on this stalk uh, probably sometime before fall. Here's a couple flowers on here. Um, but this is all first year growth. So I did top these out. I tipped them off. You can see here where I just nipped the little tips of them off when they get it to be about chin high for me. That ain't very tall for most people. 
<laughs> okay. So, and then uh, I just tilled up this section. This section was uh, Indian corn last year. I had a small patch of Indian corn in here. And uh, I'm going to put more blackberries in here. This is a, a, a fluoracaning variety of blackberry. They're thornless. All of them are thornless. And uh, this one's called Ponca. So this is supposed to be the best tasting blackberry on the market. And uh, it's a smaller smaller blackberry than the, the Primark Freedom but supposedly a consistently better tasting berry you know right down the line so every berry is awesome you know sometimes you get into other berries you know and one will be taste great and the next one is like eh, that's all right but it's not as good as that first one or you come into that but supposedly these pockets are consistently awesome not very big but a very tasty berry. So I'm putting in, I have 10 of these that I got plugs in the spring and I started them. I didn't have this ready, so I put them in these pots here. These, I don't know how many gallons that is, maybe three gallons of soil, something like that. And I had these plastic pots, I had soil. So I just stuck the stuck the plugs in here and, and uh, kept them well fertilized and watered and they grew up real nice and they're nice and stocky and strong and really vibrant so uh, I'm real happy with the plants I got these came in the mail and uh, yeah I couldn't be happier so I got more of them to put in and there's gonna be another row here I got room for another row then if I ever get my my brush pile chipped up uh, I'll have room to move the fence back a little bit and, and maybe get another two rows in which is my long term long term goal get that done so here we go these are ponca that variety there and those are ponkas in the pots yet I just put them in the ground that's a this is a, uh, this isn't plastic this is a a woven like a like a nylon fabric you know kind of like what they made feed sacks out of now same type of material and that's a four foot wide roll oh, i think i get it in 300 feet long rolls and then the drip tapes underneath there you know sometimes you got to replace that because it gets old and you got to splice it a bunch of times because rodents like to nibble on it and get a drink and so that's easy and inexpensive to fix. And here we have our Primark Freedoms. Look at all this new growth up here. I had just pinched this maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe two weeks ago now. So this is what I got in two weeks. It's all new growth there. Beautiful. And here we got our uh, Beyond Strawberries. So every other row is a different type of berry and then every other row of berries is a different type of berry so it goes albion seascape albion seascape albion seascape down the line and then all the way at the other end were my june bearings i had chandlers and uh oh i forget the name of the other one but any anyhow it looks a little dry even though i've had the irrigation running non-stop and we've had Three and a half inches of rain the other day and it's just uh hot but you can see in here under the under the plastic the ground the ground has moisture in it i keep it moist under this plastic that's the only way you're going to get nice big berries like this see all the raspberries on here that are green yet this isn't a black raspberry it's supposed to be it's supposed to be jewel but I'm thinking it might be uh, Joan Jay, maybe. I think that's a, I think Joan Jay is a, a Prima Caning. Yeah, these are Joan Jays here. So that would make sense if they were 
sending me some of these maybe they just made a mistake and sent me double of this and forgot to get the whatever but they had a tag on it that said jewel and this is what I got so and down on this end I have a a yellow raspberry uh, and look at the bees on them. the bees love raspberries and we are so blessed to have these bees we have a lot of honeybees too but for some reason these little black and yellow ones are like a little ground bumblebee I don't know but they are always on these and wasps Japanese beetles like them too. That's why these leaves look like they've been hammered. Look at that. They were really bad last week. They don't seem to be so bad. Here's one. See, we don't like them things. We just squish them when we see them. They're invasive and a real problem here. They destroyed my cherry trees. That's another day's video. Alright. And then these are... Uh, these are a floricaning variety of raspberry floricanes, second year. So they'll grow this year and then I'll trim them and we'll get these laterals out the sides next year and that's where your fruit will be. Down here, here, these are the yellow ones. Now these are uh, an ever-bearing variety. And, and look here, more Japanese beetles. This is horrible. Oh, they all got away. I should have had a can of gas. That's the best way to get them. You have a little coffee can with some gas in it. And you just bump the plant and they fall right in. And they're done. Uh, beetle traps. That's something you want to give to your neighbor. All that does is draw more beetles. They are horrible this year. Now I just picked these seascapes this morning and they're already, already by two o'clock. There's new berries that could probably be picked. Let me see here how the bottoms look. Oh, see, that's a little white yet, but <laughs> within another day, these you could pick that. All right. Well, there's my. Naughty girls over there. My Rhode Island Reds. They give us our breakfast and dinner sometimes. And then uh, June bearing varieties over there. I got four or five short rows. And a big patch of rhubarb. And out that way is uh, black raspberries on the other side of the rhubarb. And there's an orchard over there with about oh, 30 some fruit trees. All right, well, that's going to conclude today's lecture on strawberry production from somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, but it turns out that it, I, I broke all the rules. I broke all the rules in strawberry growing, and, and I still managed to get a fairly decent crop. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope uh, you find this as entertaining as I do. Thanks.